Okay, um, hello there year 10. This is a video to go with um, the takeaway material from uh, your electricity fish physics session that you should have had in uh, over the first couple of weeks back. So the thing about electricity in general is that if you can stick with it, if you can try and learn the rules and do some practice questions and mark yourself and try to improve, and get help where uh, when it's not completely clear and and persevere with the process of just trying to get better and and go with it except that you won't be perfect straight away um, but just try to understand each new di situation then you will beat a lot of people in fact you'll beat most people um, because even without um, COVID-19 electricity was one of the biggest subjects where where students just would give up um, um, it does take two or three different um, kind of looks at uh, the concepts in different situations so if you don't get it ask ask your teacher email me mr hale or whoever your physics teacher is um, get some help because you you're not stupid uh, if you don't get it the fir on the first time of looking at it, most people take three or four times to understand some of the basics about electricity. So um, the key point is ask if you don't get it. Okay, so I'll be flicking between the um, the uh, questions and um, the mark scheme and giving you some kind of further depth as we go through. Question one, a student builds a circuit using filament lamps. A filament is just a wire that heats up, uh, if you didn't know. Um, part A, sketch a current potential different graph for the filament on figure one. So, um, it's really important to realize that current and potential difference could be given to you on the axes either way around so it's really important to know what you're do you're doing so the, the key thing is about a, a current potential difference graph about a filament lamp is that as you increase the potential difference across a filament lamp initially the current starts to increase with it so you can see it starts from zero and initially you have a straight line you have a directly proportional relationship um, whilst the potential difference is low. This is when the filament is is um, at a steady temperature and hasn't heated up. As soon as the current starts to reach um, higher points, what happens is that current uh, makes the um, makes the the wire called the filament uh, glow red hot and heat up and hot filaments the electrons within them cannot move through as well as they could when the filament was um, at room temperature because the atoms in the metal are vibrating back and forth in such a way that they hinder the flow of electrons um, and so what you see happening is the rate of increase of current with potential difference start to decrease and then it levels off so further increases in potential difference uh, do not give you any more current so I've only kind of waved my mouse above the line in this quadrant of the graph and that's when we say that um, well that's that's when the um, the lamp is, is wired up one way. If you were to w reverse the polarity of the current uh, and, f and make it travel through the lamp in the opposite direction, the same thing would happen, but the current would flow in the negative direction. But there'd still come a point where it levels off due to the same reason. Uh, the filament getting hot and the resistance of the, of the filament increasing. So... Um, let's just uh, maybe go down here to the mark scheme so a curve that passes through the first and third quadrants only 
uh, passing through the origin. So we did that and the gradient has got to lessen and I hope you're convinced that my graph did that. Um, good. I think in this case, by the way, that's one, two, three, four. Um, well done. On to the next one. So we've got a parallel circuit now and two identical, that's a really key word here, filament lamps. So current in parallel circuits splits at junctions and recombines at junctions. And remember, current always comes out of the positive terminal, which is the taller, thinner terminal, and goes back in the negative terminal, which is the shorter, sometimes fatter terminal. Um, so what's going to happen to the current I1 when it gets here? Well, when it gets here, because the filament lamps have equal resistance, um, it's going to be equally easy for the current to travel along uh, this branch, so that's I2, or this branch, I3. And so they are going to be the same current. So one thing you can say straight away is I2 equals I3. Um, the second thing to realize is that the current into a branch in total must equal the Sorry, I'll say that again. I was being careless there. So the sum of the currents into a branch in a parallel circuit must be equal to the sum of the currents out of a branch. So the only one coming into this junction is I1. So that's our this term down here. I'm trying to indicate it with, with my mouse. That's the, the total sum of the inputs to the to the junction. The outputs to the, to the junction we're talking about are I2 and I3. So if you add up I2 and I3, you would get I1. And I've put that there. So flicking to the answers. Um, so those two points straight away, any two. Um, other things which should have given you credit, so two lots of I2 is equal to I1 or two lots of I3 is equal to I1 so they're both true well done so fairly challenging six mark question this and and um, let's make a start and I'll be be highlighting certain things as we go through so part C calculate the charge that flows through a cell in one minute uh, each filament lamp has a power of uh, 3 watts and a resistance of 12 ohms. Write down any equations that you use. Give the unit. Okay, so a number of things here. The phrase give the unit is a giveaway. So if we know the unit for charge, we're going to get a mark for that. So, you know, you could even put C for coulombs, which is the unit of charge, straight away. Um, something to watch out for. They've given time in a non-standard unit in a minute, so um, you should know as a higher tier candidate that there are 60 seconds in a minute. So that's something to watch out for. You're going to need to convert that. Watts, are, watts will not need converting in this case, and ohms will not need converting. However, how do we get from uh, a time, a power, and a resistance and get to um, a charge? Well, the first thing I need, uh, I know that I'm going to need is I'm going to need charge is equal to current times time. So I knew that because um, it asked me for what the um, charge is, and it also tells me a time. But what I don't know is I don't know the current. So I'm going to need something else which allows me to get to the current from resistance and power. And, you know, there's, there's maybe two ways you could, could get to it, but the quickest one is P is equal to I squared times R. So power is equal to cur current squared times resistance. So how I did this is I stuck with this equation first, and I realized I needed to work out the current to put it into this Q is equal to IT equation. So first step I did is I divided both sides by R to give me P divided by R equals I squared. And then I square rooted both sides. So now 
I know my power and my resistance and that gives me my current so how did I proceed I actually went back to this one now I've got a way of working out my current I apply it to each lamp in turn so I can find out I know the the power of um, each filament lamp and their resistance so I can find out the current through each one so I put in my numbers which is 3 and 12 and I found my current through um, the branch with I2 on is 0 0.5 amps and the current through the branch with I3 on must be the same 0 0.5 amps now The question is asking me the current that flows through the cell. The current flowing through the cell is I1. And I know that I1 is just I2 plus I3. Because that is what um, I had for that part of the question. Um, so I added up I2 and I3 and I got 1 amp. And then I put, it, put my... Um, current which I now know is 1 amp and my time which is obviously just 60 seconds because there's 60 seconds in a minute and that gives me a charge of 60 coulombs so if you did it another way and got 60 coulombs well done um, as that's a, that is as hard as it gets really for electricity so you've had to use a parallel circuit rule and you've had to use two equations together uh, and it there's had a conversion in there so you know that is as hard as it gets so many congratulations if you got it if you were getting two or three marks out of that and and initially you would be a fairly decent candidate and you would be doing okay um, I would say a lot of people would just completely uh, struggle with that question and be coming out with ones and twos in my experience. So please, if you're kind of freaking out and you're thinking, oh my God, uh, if they're all like this, I can't do it. They're not. This is this is a really hard example. Um, and, um, you know, stick with it. Do as many of these harder ones as you can enjoy the challenge and uh, everything will turn out all right okay do not beat yourself up if you didn't get that one uh, just you know you've got the answers yourself but so you can you can uh, have a look and see if you you gain credit so next one the student builds a different circuit so we've got a series circuit this time another cell an ammeter connected correctly going through a fixed resistor and then through an LDR remember the job of an LDR as the light intensity increases the resistance decreases voltmeter is connected up so it's measuring the potential difference across the LDR and it's everything's correct there so um, explain how the readings on both meters change when the environmental conditions change really important with these answers uh, with these explain how kind of like sensing components affect things in your circuit really important to remember that your answers have to be step by step and they have to be coherent so that means that the examiner needs to be able to follow your line of logic you don't have to use any um, you know complicated sentence structures my advice is to complete it uh, sorry to keep it really simple as you can see I am a simple person I am using bullet points so step by step by step by step one bullet point for each so um, the first thing to realize is you you would start by sensing the environment so you've either got to talk about the light intensity detected by the LDR increasing or decreasing so I picked increasing um, and I said when the light intensity on the LDR increases it resists its resistance falls okay so remember they behave like that um, LDRs and thermistors as the conditions that they detect increase their resistance decreases it's an inversely proportional relationship so what does the resistance falling 
due to the circuit? Well, the potential difference across the LDR would decrease if the resistance of the LDR itself decreases. Had it been the other way around and the uh, resistance increased, then the potential difference across it would increase. So the rule is the greater the resistance that a component offers, the bigger the potential difference across it. In this case, the resistance has fallen, so the potential difference across the LDR must also decrease. So the voltmeter will give me a smaller reading. And I've said that in my second bullet point um, down here. OK, so what does that do? So you've got two resistive components and um, the, the resistance of this one um, has decreased. So that means that because it's a series circuit, the whole circuit resistance has decreased. So it's making it easier for current to flow around our series circuit. So that would result in the ammeter reading going up. There'd be a greater current in the circuit because the total resistance of the circuit has gone down. Now my last bullet point really was kind of me protecting myself. Um, and what I've said is a little summary of the other way around. So I've said similarly a decrease in light intensity would cause the reading on the voltmeter to increase and the reading on the ammeter to decrease. So I guess I'm just reinforcing to the uh, um, examiner that um, I understand it step by step in either direction. Okay, so um, going to the mark scheme. If you are saying stuff that isn't relevant and your logic is completely broken, you're scraping down the one or two marks. So if you don't really know what's happening, um, maybe there's a bit there that's correct, but you'll be in trouble, one or two marks. Um, if you basically have got, got the science somewhat, but your logic, your step-by-step -step is slightly flawed, and so it doesn't completely make scientific sense your answer, then you're getting three or four. To get five or six, you must be talking about relevant points, so you must understand what's going on step by step, and everything is linked together in a way that forms a clear account. So, you can pause the video here if you want, but um, it essentially takes you through what I what I've said um, when the resistance of the LDR changes when light intensity changes when the light intensity increases resistance of the LDR decreases so they went for the same as I did with with the light intensity increasing overall circuit resistance decreases um, you could have said the potential difference across um, the total resistance remains unchanged I didn't mention that but I don't think it would have affected the score that I got. Uh, it led to the same conclusion that the current in the amateur would increase. Uh, potential difference across the fixed resistor increases. I didn't mention that. I could have done. Potential difference across the LDR decreases. The reading on the voltmeter decreases. Um, so this word indicative means that you know, this is the, it, the, the these are ways to say the correct science or scientific points that you need. All right, it doesn't mean if you didn't nail every bit of it, you can't possibly have understood, or, or you can't get a really good score or maximum score. Okay, um, what about this stuff? Potential differences shared between the components in series. I didn't say that. Um, the lower the resistance of the LDR, the smaller the share of the potential difference. I did say that, and I did say the reading on the voltmeter decreases. So I, I hope you're convinced there that I've got enough of it to form a coherent answer. Next one. A student is investigating some electrical components. Describe how the student could set up a circuit to find the resistance of a lamp. You should indicate a, uh, 
you should include a circuit diagram in your answer. What annoyed me about this, this is very unusual in that it didn't give me a space to draw the circuit diagram. So you know, in the in um, the current version of the AQA specifications which we're covering, they will leave you a space. All right. Um, so I've got a cell, ammeter, bulb, and um, or lamp, and uh, a voltmeter in parallel. Voltmeter has to be parallel. Um, the ammeter has has to be in series. So. Um, really quite interesting. This is kind of a rare example. Usually, they or well, often they'll ask you to kind of like draw a circuit so that you could change the voltage and current through the lamp, and so you could plot an uh, an IV graph. This they haven't asked you to do that. So um, you can just have one steady current. So you so you can just have a cell on its own without a variable resistor to provide a, a steady current. Um, I've said measure the voltage and the current. Uh, you have to have your voltmeter in parallel and your ammeter in series. Um, I said take three repeats, check for anomalies and either repeat or eliminate them and use um, R equals V over I to calculate the resistance. Um, my advice on these questions, this is a this is a fairly unusual one. They often give you little hints as to what what other things to pull out. So they could say in the instructions, make sure you uh, give details of how to get valid results. And in that case, you'd start to talk about keeping the temperature of the um, filament constant and steps that you could do to get that. Um, it's important because you know obviously they they kind of they they need you to know the core method but they're often looking for differentiators so they'll put in small clues or uh, definite secondary instructions in the um the question instructions to kind of tell you what other stuff to put in there um let's have a look at the answers for this one So one mark ammeter in series, one mark voltmeter in parallel. Measure the potential difference across the lamp at a known current. Calculate the resistance from V equals IR. So yeah, I was essentially I'll, I'll be alright with that one. B. The student is given an electrical component in a sealed box. She has to find out what the electrical component is by experiment. The student records the current and the potential difference of the component. Her results are shown in the figure below. So. Uh, before I draw on it, which was part of the question, it's this curve here, and it should be screaming at you that this is a diode. You should have learnt the uh, IV graph of a diode, um, and it's a really non-standard old question. This, because in your current specification, diodes will have a threshold voltage of either 0.6 or 0.7 volts. So about here. Um, is the threshold voltage. I was expecting for the graph to be completely flat up to that point and then starting to curve up as you can see that this one does from that point onwards. I was very surprised by that happening at zero volts. So uh, I tried to embrace it as I expect you to. So, um, you know, I tried to apply uh, what I knew and then I was looking forward to having a look in the mark scheme. Um, so, explain how the student could know that the electrical component in the sealed box is not an ohmic conductor. So, the thing about an ohmic conductor is that they have directly proportional relationships between potential difference and voltage. So, as the potential, uh, oh, excuse me, I, I would, I've made a mistake there. I'd lose marks. I meant to write current where the box is there. So I'd lose a mark, I wouldn't get two, as I've indicated here, I would get one. Um, so how do I know from the graph that it isn't 
directly proportional? Well, it's curved. If something is directly proportional, there is a straight line going upwards to the right and it passes through the origin. So I've said in my second sentence, as the above graph um, is curved, it isn't an ohmic conductor. So um, my word voltage, my slip writing voltage rather than current there would lose me a mark. So next one, what is the electrical component in the sealed box? Explain your answer. So it's a diode for one mark. So diodes, uh, and I was I was struggling because I couldn't talk about the threshold voltage being 0.6 or 0.7 volts. Um, so I was trying to think of what else to say. Um, so I said very high resistances at low potential differences. So you can tell that because at low potential differences, which is kind of like, you know, maybe beneath 0.5, it's the current is extremely low. But at higher potential differences, you can see that the current increases sharply. So that is definitely a feature of diodes. Remember, you only need to know the IV graphs of a diode, a thermistor, and a fixed resistor for this course. So, part D. Use the graph to determine the resistance of, component, uh, of the component at 2.3 volts. So you go up to 2.3 volts, and I put a dot where the square is there, where 2.3 volts. And I was like, ah, it's a curve. So it's the hardest possible example. To find the gradient from a curve, um, you need to draw a tangent to the line. So that's one straight line that's just touching the curve at the place at, that you're interested in. So 2.3 volts here. So I did that, and then I drew beneath it, as you can see here, I drew beneath it a gradient triangle. That is the change in my y-axis, and that is the change in my x-axis. Um, so, I know that resistance is voltage divided by current. So, my change in voltage is on the x-axis in this case, and my change in current is on the y-axis. So remember, um, delta is the Greek symbol which means change in. So I've got delta x divided by delta y. So my x-axis finished at 3 and it started at 1.3. So the change in it is 3 minus 1.3. Uh, excuse me, not 1.3, that's 1.7. So it, uh, the x-axis started at 1.7, it's where it intersects with the axis there. So it's 3 minus 1.7. On the y-axis, um, I've got uh, my y-axis finishing at 2.6. And I apologize, on this scan I did, it hasn't come out super clearly. Uh, but you get the idea. And it started at 0. So 2.6 minus 0 is 2.6. So I ended up getting 1.3 divided by 2.6, which is half an ohm. Um, so flicking to the mark scheme. So previous, well, I guess we can do all of it. So for ohmic conductors, the current is directly proportional to the potential difference. For one mark, the current is curved, so it's not an ohmic conductor. So that's fine. It's a diode for one mark. I said that. High resistance. Ah, so I didn't say that. So high resistance with negative potential differences. So that is the case. So you can see that when you reverse bias um, a diode, which means that you connect it up um, against the flow of current, it actually has an incredibly high resistance. Um, in fact, a, a perfect diode, diode what a, a physicist would call an ideal diode, would have an infinite resistance and you would have um, zero current flowing. So that's something which I could have said, uh, which I didn't. Um, so yeah, we're going through the answers. Um, high resistances, um, low resistance for positive potential differences, um, Okay, they didn't mention the threshold frequency, so actually maybe I was, maybe I should take, 
maybe I'd have to take a mark off there. Not that I'm wrong, it's just that, that my other answer hasn't got any credit given to it, which is annoying. So there's one thing which I'd add to my script. I would say this, um, because it has a high resistance with negative potential differences. And another way of saying that is reverse biased. So on to the, this one. I drew a tangent. Good. So if the examiner agreed with my read-offs from my graphs, I'd get a mark. Um, and I had to use the equation V equals IR, so R equals V over I, and to get a, a calculated value of R in this range. Um, so 0 0.50 to 0 0.6, which mine was. Um, obviously, looking at this, could I have done this better? So looking in this, looking at where the square is there, I think I could, I think I could have drawn that tangent a bit better. So the perfect tangent would only touch the um, the curve at the point where my mouse pointer is now. Okay, so yeah, it wasn't a bad effort by me. Um, but I think I could have been a little bit more careful. So some hard questions there. Both questions were difficult. You know, well done if you got to the stage of even coming to watch this video um, and noting down your improvements, um, because a lot of people won't have bothered doing it at home, and a lot of people, um, you know, if they have bothered giving it a first go, they they will not have come to this video for support. So. Well done if you got this far, and um, do drop me an email, um, wahale at fcc.farrington.academy, if you need any help, alright? Um, so, I hope you're okay during lockdown, and take care.